Hey everybody, Dustin Dapirak here, columnist Andy Graham. Uh, we are out here in Spartan Stadium. We stole, I guess, some AV room or something as usual. Uh, but uh, bathed the natural light. Yeah, it's not half bad. We didn't have to turn lights on. Anyway, um, uh, that was about as bad. We, we we've seen some really, really, really bad football games this year, and that it was one might of have topped it. <laughs> that might have topped it. That might have been the most dramaless just beating. I think we've seen this year. Uh, 55 to three final. Uh, Michigan State started pulling its stutters and seniors in the third quarter. Right after that, they ran a reverse to a left tackle or left guard, just to kind of make the point that this is so incredibly over. Uh, but this was rough. I mean, it, it seemed like Indiana had made some degree of strides uh, at Ohio State. Not that they were really ready to come out and uh, beat the number 12 team in the country, but you thought maybe there was some degree of progress. Today, you didn't see any. Not really at all. No, no, no saving graces today, really. Mm -hmm. uh, Trey Roberson had his first really, really bad tough game, game as, yeah. a, as a Hoosier. Uh, mm -hmm. And for the first time, I mean, he's been you know previously unflappable as a true freshman, but he mm -hmm. looked flustered today. Right. Uh, he would he would go to ground quickly. He would he would mess open throws when he faced a blitz. Uh, mm -hmm. It just wasn't a good day. He looked like a freshman today. And uh, you know, mm -hmm. Michigan State's the top defense in the league. They've yeah. they've led the conference in total defense pretty much all season. Mm -hmm. And uh, right the way things are shaping up right now. Uh, you know, Michigan State guaranteed themselves a, a berth in the inaugural Big Ten championship game mm -hmm. in Indy on December 3rd. And uh, for me, it's looking like Wisconsin, I bet you. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have a hard time yeah. believing that Penn State's got a win in Wisconsin. You know, and given how great a game we saw between those right. two teams here at Spartan Stadium earlier this year, that'll be probably mm -hmm. a lot of fun to watch. But yeah, it definitely. wasn't much fun to watch for Indiana fans today because they're just – what, there weren't many bright spots. I mean, there mm -hmm. was the occasional guy or the occasional glimmer. Uh, Lawrence Barnett got his first start in a while and played some cornerback. I mean, he had a, he had mm -hmm. a, he had a very he had a good solid showing today. Mostly, yeah. He, he broke he broke up a pass in the end zone because mm -hmm. he actually looked back for the ball. So that pleased this particular column. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so but I think he uh, was also the guy who got beat on the. Uh, Fake double reverse, oh, double reverse that but, uh, you know went yeah, for the touchdown. That's right. I mean, so n n n nobody emerged unscathed today on the Indiana Not side. At all. And Not frankly, at all. there just wasn't much of anything uh, to take away positively from this game for IU. A lot of negative. Uh, Jeff, mm. Jeff Thomas aggravated his shoulder injury. Apparently, he popped mm. out again. He separate. had a slight separation. Yeah, and it popped out again on him and. Uh, um, as I said, it just there just wasn't much to say about this. And the only real thing Indiana could do with this game is flush it, because yeah, uh, they got one more. You know, they're not going to get it. the old brass platoon, but there's a more valuable trophy from Indiana's point of view at stake next week, and that's mm -hmm. just how they have to look at right. it. Right. But I mean, the way you know the way Purdue's playing, the way Indiana's playing, I mean, they really are going to have to come up with their yeah, by far their best, their best effort. Best. I mean, they still haven't beaten, you know, forget a Big Ten team. They haven't beaten a football bowl subdivision team yet. I right. mean, in in what was Division One A? They don't have a win. That's um, right, and, and they'll have to bring a, the kind of effort they had at Columbus against Ohio State, or be better, and, and better, better in this sense because mm. Purdue is a passing team. Yeah. Indiana has problems with passing teams. Clearly, mm. I mean, they, yeah. you know, Michigan State is not a great running team, but boy, they can throw. They have mm. wideouts like Keyshawn Martin and Cunningham who are really good. Right. You know, you know, Cousins is a cerebral, efficient senior quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, Purdue could throw the ball. Right. And, and and so that'll be an issue for Indiana. Uh, and then Trey Roberson just have to have a, a, a much better game if Indiana's going to have a shot next right. week. The, uh, the secondary really, uh, uh, it, it, if, I don't know if it just hasn't made progress or if it's, if it's regressed. I mean, you've seen, you saw a couple just shimmering glimpses of good play even from, from the freshman safeties and from the, some of the younger guys early in the season. And uh, it's it's been a while since you've seen a really good performance from the secondary. And today... Today was up there with some maybe I don't know if it's the worst performance. I mean there were there weren't as many I guess embarrassing. Why didn't you just turn around for the ball plays? Um, but they got they got torched. I mean they flat out got torched. B.J. Cunningham and uh, shoot Keyshawn Martin just ran all over them. Just basically ran all over them and uh, and Cousins you know Cousins just picked the guys apart. Martin more or less. is really really fast. I mean sometimes yeah, Indiana yeah, really is. Indiana safeties uh, as is their uh, unfortunate habit from an mm. Indiana perspective take bad tackling angles. But yeah. you know, the one time uh, the first you know score for for Martin mm. he went up and snagged one that was that was thrown high. He mm. even went for the ball missed the ball. 
Yeah, and then, it was over. And then, and it then was Martin, over. when he landed, planted one foot and just shot, shot. like a rocket. Yeah. And, and I, you know, Murphy had a bad angle, as it turned out, but I didn't even blame him for that mm. one because Martin's so fast. He just yeah. blew right by him. No, and Martin's so, really fast. So, you know, part yeah. of this was Michigan State, but part of it also was guys who have played well at times for Indiana in the secondary, mm. like Heben, like Murphy, did not have good days today. No, no, no. There, there were guys that they, they at least had their moments, and they just – there weren't a lot of moments today. today. I mean, I, like so I said, much. I think Barnett – uh, you know, I've been, I've been saying for a while. I mean, again, he did get beat on the, uh, you know, double reverse play action. I don't know what all you call that, but there, Kirk Cousins faked two handoffs and then went deep. Yeah, they went deep. And uh, Barnett, was, Barnett that, and Murphy it, both, I think, got frozen it, by it, that. It's a flea flicker that worked. Right. So, I mean, sometimes sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they, um, you know, I've. I saw a little bit. I'm, I'm still surprised Barnett has not played very much in the last few weeks. I'm not really sure what he did to get demoted, but I, 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 my personal opinion, I think he's the best cornerback on the team. Um, but, you know, basically, like I said, he had a few moments, but that was it, nine tackles. Uh, but, you know, the rest of the guys just had a really hard time doing with the passing game. And, and Michigan State, who was the worst rushing team, uh, had, I don't know if they're the worst rushing team, they had the worst numbers uh, coming into the game. I mean, they put up 137 yards uh, on 27 carries. Yeah. So they were able to run it as well. And uh, defensively, I mean, you mentioned Trey. I mean, defensively, um, teams that really get after you are the ones that, uh, that can really – cause Indiana problems. The guys who kind of sit back and play base defense and just kind of fit their gaps and just don't let you to get really running the ball, uh, allow Indiana at least move the ball enough to stay in it. These guys brought pressure and, and they were gap sound uh, and basically and, that, that that was kind of all the, all they needed to really cause Indiana yeah, some problems. And Trey, Trey mentioned the gap sound. So when mm-hmm. We talked to him after the game as being maybe the best he's seen so far and the most solid. Yeah. And and that's really important against a guy like Roberson yeah. because sometimes Roberson, when you blitz him, he'll sidestep the blitz. Mm-hmm. And then he's really dangerous because then if right. he can take out and find a, find a crease, he can really hurt you with his feet. Mm-hmm. But in this case, if he did manage to, to sidestep the blitz, there were always Spartans waiting for him. There was no yeah. escape avenue for him. To no, make. there really wasn't. And so that was very impressive. There I mean, was, you can yeah. see why Michigan State's led the league in total defense all year. Yeah, no, there's so much. There was so much team speed on that defense. Oh, there's man. a lot. I mean, there and I mean, I think it, it's a really good argument. The Big Ten is the statistically. I mean, I, I you know probably when you actually look at them. I mean, there are a few better defenses in the SEC, but it's right. It's it's the next one. If it's not the one, I mean, I think there might be four teams in terms of scoring defense that are in the top 10 to 15. I'm not exactly sure what the stats are right now, but you know, you look at Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan State. And I think even Illinois is still up there. Uh, they've probably fallen back a little bit in recent weeks, but uh, there are some defenses that can really shut you down. I think there's four or five, maybe even six that had that are giving up 18 points or fewer per game. Uh, so they've seen some good ones, but this might be the best all around. I mean, I think Illinois leads the league in sacks. They get they get after you the most, but I mean, I think you can burn them. Uh, Michigan State gets after you almost as much, and it's right. it's harder for you to burn they, them. They, they have, have athletes in the secondary. That's that right. They have guys like Golston who can rush the passer. They have really good linebackers. Mm-hmm. And they have guys like Johnny Adams who can outrun Trey Ropers. Right, you know, exactly. I mean, they, it, it, Johnny Adams was really impressive today. It was really cool. Really impressive. He picked one, took it back, held side, you know, sack on a quarter blitz. was just, you know, and, and Roberson, I think, ran all the way to the – he was coming off the right edge. Roberson ran all the way to the left, and Johnny Adams was just right with him. Yep. And Trey couldn't do anything. Uh, so, I mean, that was – at the end of the day, I mean, uh, Michigan State's a great team. That being said, I think today was a step back. And it's going to be interesting to see just how they recover. Like you said, I mean, they kind of have to just flush it and spit on it, whatever, and move on and say, okay, well, Purdue at this point is your season anyway because it's it's the bucket game. It's in a lot of ways – it's not what people are going to remember necessarily, but it, it's a big thing. I mean, you can you can turn around a lot of uh, big, tidings if you can – It, you can it is. Purdue. It's the biggest thing. And, it, and mm-hmm. you know, the way Indiana is, uh, football – the way Indiana football has gone recently and even historically, the mm. Purdue game matters in terms of off-season momentum and, and how people feel about the program and recruiting in the state and all that kind of stuff. Mm. I mean, even if Indiana had performed well today and yeah. lost, let's say, right, a loss to Purdue in the bucket still would have overshadowed that. And mm. and if Indiana somehow get and it's going to have to seriously get its act together. To yeah, no, I mean Purdue has actually, not been, but you but, know, but if Indiana manages been good. to pull, okay. if Indiana manages to retain the bucket next week. That people forget about this game a little bit. I mean, it, it, sure. And so sure. that's. I don't think anybody that, was expecting the, an upset today, but no. Yeah. But but this, you know, the Purdue game once again is the kind of game that can send people into the off season with a better feeling right. than, than yeah. they have today. Because today mm. there weren't any positives to take out of today. I don't think. No. And I mean, the thing it is though, after Ohio State, you didn't have mom- a lot of momentum, but you had an inkling, just a little bit. Sure. And there isn't any left. 
I mean, basically yeah. after today, you, you don't feel like whatever momentum they got to have has got to start in practice because yeah. they come out of it with nothing. Yeah, they're going to come out of a bye week. You know, you're either going to be kind of fresh and refreshed or you're going to be stale. And you yeah. see that happen to, to teams. It's sure. either one or the other. Today yeah. it was option B. Very so, much so. So we'll see what happens the, the, with the rivalry game. It's kind of that way too. I mean, either either you get stoked and you play the way you need to play, or you don't. Yeah. We'll see what happens with IU. We'll see you one more week. Thanks, guys. Week.